Hello and welcome again to another lecture on, con on construction equipment and today we're going to be talking about equipment involved in concrete in general whether it's mixing or placing or finishing the concrete so let's see what are the concrete different operations and what kind of equipment is involved in these operations first of all what's concrete concrete is a flexible construction material we call it flexible because again in its initial form before gaining its strength before setting it's sort of a fluid uh, mixture that can fill any form it's placed in it's used to build structural components in many shapes or strong pavements to withstand surface abrasion it's produced by mixing portland cement with water aggregates and sometimes admixtures to improve properties such as workability strength weight and resistance to elements including freezing and thawing and including attacks uh, by uh, sulfates or chlorides or any other chemicals that might affect the concrete. The different concrete operations include uh, the process of manufacturing, placing concrete, whether plain or reinforced. Of course, the difference is adding the rebar. And it consists of the following operations. Batching, which is basically calibrating and weighing the different components of the mixture. Mixing, transporting after that concrete has been mixed, transporting it to the construction site. Placing, which is putting the concrete or removing the concrete from the transportation means to its final place. Consolidating or vibrating to remove any air pockets in the concrete, which are going to reduce its strength. Finishing the surface of concrete and finally curing. And curing is primarily to distinguish uh, the difference between curing and setting. Some people confuse the two issues. The uh, uh, reaction, the chemical reaction that results in concrete gaining its strength is called an exothermal uh, reaction. Exothermal means it emits heat. So when it emits heat, it sort of evaporates the water that inclu that's included in the concrete itself. That's why that water is going to be evaporating through very fine channel ca channels ca called the uh, capillary channels that if not treated properly are going to result in hair cracks on the surface of concrete which would weaken the concrete and later on would allow moisture and uh, water or other chemicals to penetrate through the concrete and attack the rebar which is going to cause it to rust and corrode and separate from the concrete itself so in order to uh, avoid all of that we are going to replenish that water inside the concrete by keeping the concrete moist for about three to five days after it has been placed this can be uh, very simply done by just wetting the concrete with a water hose or covering the concrete with a wet surface like wet burlap for example or even applying certain chemicals to seal the concrete and prevent that water from evaporating this is the process of curing Batching is the process of proportioning the ingredients of the concrete mix. Uh, most specifications require a batching accuracy between 1 and 3 percent. And this is going to be included in the specifications of the concrete that's going to tell you about the, uh, the concrete mix and the trial mix that's going to be subject to testing to make sure that it produces the final stresses uh, or resistance that the concrete should withstand before it breaks. Concrete, especially in large volumes, is usually best in the central batch plant. We're going to see a sample of these batch plants. Some central batch plants mix the concrete, while others only batch, measure, and calibrate the ingredients. The product can be either a dry, dry mix without adding water, just including the sand, cement, and gravel, and any other additives, dry additives, or it could be a wet mix by adding water and any other fluid additives or admixtures as well. <clears throat> These are different uh, modes of mixing the concrete, batching and mixing the concrete. So we can here see, for example, here a central batch plant that can produce anywhere between 275 and 450 cubic yards per hour, huge production. This is a portable mixer where you're going to pour the cement, sand and gravel and add water. And this, is, this drum mixer is going to mix the concrete and it has a capacity of 5 to 10 cubic yards per hour relatively small but it has the mobility and here are side batch plants for example that can produce anywhere between 165 
to 230 cubic yards per hour where you have the silos and these belt conveyors can transport the gravel and the sand and so on they are mixed the silo usually holds the cement and then they're going to be added to this uh, transit mixer that's going to transport the concrete to the site here we have a pavement batch plant for uh, concrete uh, pavements and again here's the drum of that transit mixer where it's going to be mixed and transported to the site it can produce up to 600 cubic yards per hour so a very high capacity now we're going to have a look quickly at two video clips one representing a uh, portable or a uh, movable batch plant and the other one talks about one of the innovations in how to reuse the concrete or how to have a zero waste in concrete so let's watch these two uh, clips our system is being used to build a one million square foot shopping mall an airport parking lot and a 200 turbine wind farm at Wash Creek the plant has a footprint of approximately the size of an 18 wheeler self-erecting and pouring within a day we bring our professional staff, including an experienced patcher, to the customer's job site. We take the ready-mix trucks off of the road, producing a more environmentally friendly product. We are able to work to the customer's schedule, including evenings, weekends, and last-minute jobs. The aggregate for the batch plant can be stored as required anywhere on the job site. In some cases, we can also produce the gravel on-site instead of the customer hauling it away. Thank you for ReadyMix mobile batch plant has three bins which are typically used for sand and two different sizes of gravel, such as 3 8 and 3 quarter inch. We have two ready mix trucks, and on really high volume days of over 500 meters, we bring in a third truck. The truck is loaded in five minutes and delivers the concrete to the pump or the specific area on the job site. Our control system can handle hundreds of mix designs. All of the mix designs for the customer's job are in the system before the job starts. Having the batcher on site makes it easy to change or add mixed designs to fulfill the requirements of the job. Our control system handles the precise weighing of the cement, aggregates, water, and admixtures. We have all of the admixtures on site that the customer's job may require. The mobile plant has a 400 gallon weigh bin that can always be primed with hot water, a 660 gallon water surge bin, and a 2,000 gallon storage tank. We also have a 100 horsepower diesel engine to supply the power required to run the plant. We also have a 75 ton self-erecting silo, which can be used to store more cement, or along with a 58 ton silo, can be used to store cement and fly ash. We can produce high strength or specialized concrete. Our mobile batch plant can be used to build office buildings, apartment buildings, tilt-up warehouses, large subdivisions, and is ideal for remote locations. Give us a call at 604-533-0052 to learn more about our plant's capabilities and how we can help you with your next program. So as you can see here, uh, it mentions something about adding hot water. And this is primarily going to be used in very cold weather because if you add just cold water to the concrete mix, that water might freeze and it's going to defeat the purpose of having that water in the first place because it's not going to properly react with the cement and give the concrete its strength. Therefore, you're going to have to use hot water that's going to take some time to cool down and you can uh, you can mix the concrete properly in this case. On the other hand, if you're going to be working in a very hot climate, then in this case we're going to use chilled water or even add ice to the concrete mix to slow down the process of, uh, of setting of that concrete because you don't want the concrete to set in a transit mixer or before reaching its final destination. Therefore, it's not going to have the required strength from that concrete. Now let's look at the second video clip which is going to talk about the zero waste concrete and this is a system that has been adopted in Australia. I don't know if it, if it has been used here in the US but let's, let's have a look at what they're talking about. Sustainable concrete. Introducing the zero waste concrete plant. In keeping with its focus on maximizing the environmental sustainability of its business operations, ACT-based concrete supplier Elvin Group has created what is believed to be Australia's first zero-waste concrete plant.
utilizing a range of state-of-the-art processing equipment from Handy Creek Recycling Proprietary Limited, Golden Group has managed to effectively recover and recycle all of the waste concrete from its Canberra batch plants, whilst at the same time recycling up to 12,000 litres of water per hour. Located in a purpose-built truck washout area, the concrete reclaimer captures the washout material in a large trough behind the truck. From here, it is washed into the unit separation chamber where the sand and aggregate components of the concrete are separated into high quality resource streams ready for reuse. The new zero waste system incorporates two major components, a concrete reclaimer and an automated water treatment system. These two components work together in tandem to reclaim the valuable solid resources from the waste material and treat the runoff water for reuse. The cement binder material, which remains suspended in the processed water, is sent to the water treatment segment of the zero waste system. Here, the processed water, together with runoff water from the truck washing and batching area, is sent to a primary agitator where a flocculant is added to aid with the separation process. The water is then pumped to a separation silo from where it is gravity fed into the final filter. The clean water is then returned to a storage tank for reuse in the concrete batching process for truck washing and in water tankers. Interestingly, the high quality dewatered filter cake generated by the water treatment process is suitable for use in a range of manufacturing processes and products, including brick and pavers, and can also be used in road-based material, thereby closing the loop completely on the resource stream. So as you can see, they have used every part of the concrete, sort of recycling the concrete and having zero waste while the concrete is still fresh because once the concrete has been consolidated when it's gained its strength especially when you're demolishing a building or something like that well uh, it's very hard to recycle that concrete except for using it as uh, sort of gravel for uh, highway construction or something like that but other than that this is the only way they have been able to recycle the water the cement the sand and the gravel as well The second step is going to be transporting, or the third step actually, after batching and mixing, is going to be transporting, and it's usually performed using a transit mixer or a truck to transport the concrete, whether it's wet or dry mix. If it's wet, water has already been added. If it's a, if it's a dry mix, then it can travel for longer distances because now the concrete is not going to set, and then you add the water as you approach the construction site. So they're used to transport the concrete from batch plant to the construction site. If travel time exceeds 30 minutes, if you have a uh, remote site, then usually we're going to use the dry mix with water added as the truck approaches the construction site. And it's going to have to mix it for a certain number of revolutions to allow for the concrete ingredients to mix together. Otherwise, the wet mix would be loaded in the drum and the drum rotates to keep mixing the concrete and preventing segregation. Segregation is the separation of the heavier particles from the smaller ones, basically the separation of the gravel from sand that creates inconsistent concrete which is a major weakness in the concrete. The drum capacity for the transit mixers is anywhere between 6 to 15 cubic yards. The trucks have an inclined axis, revolving drum assemblies used for the concrete mixing. It may discharge concrete from front or rear end, we're going to see a couple of pictures on that. Rotating speed is about 2 to 6 revolutions per minute, which is relatively slow. And mixing speed is 6 to 18 revolutions per minute. Maximum stay of concrete in the drum is uh, 1.5 hours or 300 revolutions. Beyond 300 revolutions is going to create some segregation 
and beyond one and a half hours concrete might consolidate inside the drum render it totally uh, unusable in this case you would lose the, the truck itself or you, you would lose the drum itself and you have to do a major operation to chip or break the concrete from inside the drum here we have for example a transit mixer as you can see the drum is tilted a little bit and here's the water tank that can be adding water as the truck approaches the site this one is a transit mixer without water tank so usually it's going to be uh, used for shorter distances where you load it with the wet mix already and here you can see we have a chute at the end of the of the drum that's going to be used to discharge the concrete used in this case for pavement and here's another example of that drum discharging the concrete in a loader that can carry it to another uh, distance. To place the concrete now that we have transported it to the site, one of the media for, you, for placing the concrete includes concrete buckets attached to a tower crane. So the concrete buckets can be used in conjunction with tower cranes or helicopters to place concrete. In some cases, for example, well, these, these are extreme cases, let's say, uh, like what happened in Japan last year, the, uh, I think it was, it was called Fukushima uh, reactor, where there was some leakage. Now this reactor has to be encased in concrete. Of course, you cannot approach that reactor, so you cannot use cranes. In this case, you load the concrete in buckets that are carried by helicopters and drop this concrete to cover and encase that uh, reactor. Capacities for the buckets range for from 0.5 to 4 cubic yards for general purposes and up to 12 cubic yards for special construction usually used for heavy civil construction like dams or massive concretes for harbors and ports and, and so on. The bucket is filled through the chute of the transit mixer or directly from a batch plant and lifted to the required level for placing concrete. Multiple buckets can be used to reduce the placing cycle time. So you would have two buckets, for example, one being filled while the other one being lifted to uh, download the concrete. And as soon as the other one uh, is uh, returns back to its initial position, you load the filled one and so on and so forth. That's going to expedite the concrete placing cycle. We can also use concrete pumps. You may have seen in... Uh, some of the cliffs that we've seen about the uh, tallest building in the world, how they place the concrete using concrete pumps, because obviously for the tallest building in the world, uh, tower cranes are not going to be a feasible uh, option, but in this case, concrete pumps was were the selected mode. Concrete pumps can be used to transport concrete under pressure to the required level, and these can be either fixed uh, pumps or mobile pumps. The means of transport can be a rigid pipe, a flexible hose or a combination of both so here for example we have these are rigid pipes and at the end we have a tremie or a flexible hose concrete pumps are rated in cubic yards per hour how many cubic yards can they pump per hour these pumps can be either stationary this one is relatively stationary because it's moved to the construction site and remains there until uh, the concrete is pumped whereas this one is carried over a truck so it moves to the construction site on a regular basis and it's followed by the transit mixers uh, where uh, the chute of the transit mixer is going to empty the concrete in another chute in the truck in the in the pump and it's going to uh, pump that concrete to whatever level is needed production can be up to 170 cubic yards per hour and reach up to 150 feet horizontally that's a relatively high reach pumped concrete has to be more fluid the water cement content or through water cement content or plasticizers to make it easy to overcome the friction within the pipes and move smoothly and be pumped and it's it's more fluid than regular concrete for smooth pumping and reducing segregation as well another way of placing concrete is concrete buggies that can move concrete from the mixer trucks to the desired location or from the dump area of a bucket on elevated levels so for example you might have a large floor area for a high-rise building and the concrete uh, uh, bucket is going to pour the concrete in a certain uh, area and then you're gonna 
load that concrete on buggies that can travel to the different corners of that floor. They can have capacities of 10 to 30 cubic feet and can travel at speed, speeds up to 15 miles per hour. Now the fourth step is going to be the consolidation or the vibrating of the concrete. Concrete vibrators are used to consolidate concrete. Get rid of air pockets and make sure the concrete engulfs the rebar to avoid honeycombing which is basically voids around the rebar which are going to result in poor and weak concrete. It, they can be electrical powered, gasoline or compressed air vibra vibrators. External vibrators might be installed on the formwork to shake the concrete over a wider area. So these are going to be vibrators installed on the formwork itself, especially for walls that are going to be able to shake that, uh, that formwork so that concrete fills all the gaps around the rebar. The next step, once the concrete has been placed and vibrated, is to finish the surface. Power floats or trowels are used for, to embed uh, the surface aggregate and smooth the surface of the concrete. So, again, to flatten and have a smooth finish for the concrete. Some are walked behind while other, others are riding. This one, for example, is a walk behind. So, it's held from the handles by an operator who walks and pushes them in front of him or her. And this one is a uh, ride, uh, ride, uh, riding a uh, riding um, uh, finishing uh, concrete finisher. It's called the helicopter because it has blades like those of a helicopter. And again, using the different controls, you can adjust the thickness and the height of the finish and so on. Now we're going to have another look at another uh, video clip showing troweling of that concrete and finishing it for a concrete uh, paving job uh, so let's have a look at that you can see the concrete being uh, poured from the chute of a transit mixer and this is something like a driveway or a simple slab and this is the trowel that has a vibrator on top of it so it vibrates the concrete while finishing its surface to have a flat finish and you can see the labor behind that trowel this trying to... This concrete is going to be uh, used to level the concrete while compacting it at the same time and vibrating it. You see the concrete being pulled <coughs> for a uh, driveway and in the back there's a transit mixer that's pulling the concrete through the chute and then these labor try to level the concrete while the screed gives the final leveling and the final uh, shape for the surface of the concrete. Now you can see the chute in the back of uh, the frame. Uh, additional patching might be needed later on. So for example in this part here you can see that this was not done properly. So later on they can come back and, and patch it. This concrete can be either uh, reinforced with uh, welded wire fabric as most of the uh, driveways would be. So here in uh, at the bottom you're going to find the welded wire fabric or welded wire, wire mesh. It can be either one layer or two layers depending on the design. Mostly it's going to be one layer. Now you can see that at the edge, the, uh, the concrete is going to be slightly lower than in the middle. But this can be controlled by the speed of the motion of uh, the screed, just to make sure that the concrete is level. trying to fill any holes before the screen finishes the surface. Uh, 
so it, is, it can see it's, it can relatively rel relatively be done at a uh, relatively high speed, so it didn't take too long. Uh, concrete paving we can have also something called slip forms that are going to uh, inject the concrete and uh, mold it to the uh, uh, required shape so slip form pavers are used to distribute the concrete across the surface to be paved and then to vibrate screed and finish the concrete so it's a one one-stop shop it, it's very similar to the uh, asphalt pavers as well but instead of using asphalt we're going to use concrete in this case and here you can see it can be done for a very narrow width or for much wider areas. This is going to be the screen that's going to finish that concrete. They can place concrete pavements up to 18 inches thick, 25 feet wide at a speed of up to 18 feet per minute, relatively fast. Now, how are we going to measure the production of a concrete operation? Since several pieces of equipment are used in series to achieve the concrete operations, for example, batch plant followed by a transit mixer followed by maybe a tower crane with buckets followed by uh, a crew of labor that are going to place and finish and vibrate the concrete and so on optimization can be achieved to produce the least cost or the shortest time depending on the amount of resources that you have you have to have a balanced operation so you're not going to use for example a very big batch plant with only one transit mixer because the, the production of the batch plant is going to be limited by the transportation capacity which is going to be through the transit mixer. And if you have a wide, uh, a large no a fleet of transit mixers, you're not going to use only one bucket with a tower crane because again, you're going to have a long queue of these transit mixers which again defeats the purpose and reduces the production rate. The rate at which concrete is delivered may control the duration of the operation, whereas in other cases the rate of placing and finishing might be the critical factor so the number of labor and crews that are going to be available for placing and finishing might be the controlling factor in that operation the productivity of a concrete pump can be estimated from the manufacturer's data sheets the productivity of a crane which is going to tell you basically how many cubic yards you can produce per hour the productivity of a crane and bucket operation can be estimated from uh, bucket volume times operational efficiency divided by cycle time which is the same equation that we've used for every other equipment which is volume per cycle divided by cycle time or multiplied by number of cycles per hour which is basically one hour divided by the cycle time the productivity of concrete buggies can be estimated as again buggy volume times operational efficiency divided by cycle time and the cycle time in this case is going to include loading time travel time dump time and return to be loaded one more time Let's look at a very simple example on concrete operations. We have a concrete slab with dimensions of 90 by 120 feet and the thickness is 10 inches. Uh, it's to be constructed. The available equipment include a 16 cubic foot buggy or a 2 cubic yard bucket. The load and dump time for the buggy is 1.7 minutes. And the average travel speed is 1.5 miles per hour when loaded and two and a half miles per hour when empty for the return trip. The average travel distance is 250 feet. The cycle time for a hydraulic crane to load, lift, empty and return the bucket is eight minutes. Operational efficiency for both operations is 50 minutes per hour. What's the estimated productivity for the buggy and what's the estimated productivity of the bucket? So if we were to choose a system to place concrete, which one are we gonna select based on uh, production time the the criterion that we're looking at or the main factor is we need to finish that operation as soon as possible so for the buggy the cycle time is going to be 1.7 minutes which is basically the uh, load and dump time which is fixed time plus the travel time 250 divided by 1.5 miles per hour and then we have the factor trans to to convert from feet to miles per hour plus 250 divided by two and a half miles per hour, that's the return trip. So adding all of these together gives us a cycle time of 4.7 minutes. The productivity of the buggy is 16 cubic feet times 50 minutes per hour 
divided by 27 cubic feet per cubic yard to convert from cubic feet to cubic yard divided by also the cycle time which is 4.7 minutes and that gives 6.3 cubic yards per hour so the production for the buggy 6.3 cubic yards per hour relatively low let's see what the uh, the bucket is going to do for the crane and bucket we have two cubic yards times 50 minutes per hour divided by eight minutes that's the operational efficiency divided by eight minutes that the cycle time so it gives 12 and a half cubic yards per hour so obviously 6.3 12 and a half that's about twice as much uh, concrete that you can place per hour so in this case we're going to select the crane and bucket these are different examples of equipment used again to finish the concrete this is a uh, a mixer a portable mixer this is a conveyor belt to place the concrete in places where you cannot reach with any other means this is a transit mixer with the chute and this is a concrete finisher especially for pavement and it's also used for asphalt so it's either asphalt or concrete before the concrete gains its uh, initial setting because otherwise uh, it's not going to be able to finish the surface and again here are some examples of these different transit mixers we have seen this uh, slide before with these four different pictures so these are examples of uh, transit mixers with different sizes for their drums this is basically our introduction or our lecture on concrete equipment as you have seen it's quite simple once we understand the operation and once we can balance the different equipment to have the best productivity for this equipment